So I want to go through what a Newman projection is. A Newman projection is, is a way of drawing an organic molecule that's trying to, to really show what's happening in three dimensions with this thing. Uh, and so here's, here's a propane molecule that I've built. So we've got our three carbons and our eight hydrogens. And we want, to, we want to look at what are called conformational isomers. And a conformational isomer is the same molecule, but where it's been rotated. And sometimes rotations end up with the same thing. If I take this and I rotate it you know, to here, that's the same molecule and nothing's changed because these are interchangeable. But there are ways I can rotate this that actually make the molecule different. I want to look at two of them here. So in this one, what I'm trying to draw here is this. This, this blue dot here. One right in the center here. This is my front carbon. Okay. So when I when I hold this up, what I'm drawing is this this blue dot there is, is this carbon here. And I'm looking at it from this side. So so where you are in the video camera looking towards this, that's that. And so coming off of that carbon are three different hydrogens. One straight up, which is this one, and then the other two out to each side. Okay. Now behind that carbon is a second carbon. That's this one. So that I represent with this circle here to kind of distinguish the lines coming off of it to make it a little easier to see. That one has two hydrogens, one going kind of up and to the left, one going up and to the right. And so that's that picture there. And then the, the methyl group at the end of the propane is, is down below. Okay. And so what I want to do is I then want to start to rotate about that bond and see what different things I can come up with. Okay. So in this picture, this, I have the hydrogens drawn pretty close together in a way where I'm trying to show that they are lined up with each other. So let me ditch this pen for a second here. So really, what we're trying to distinguish here is when the molecule is like this, this hydrogen atom is pretty far away from all of the others. But when I rotate it like this, it's now going to be significantly closer to this. And there's going to therefore be an interaction, maybe a repulsion, maybe an attraction. In this case, a little bit of a repulsion between them. So what we find is that when we see molecules, they're going to be more likely to be in this kind of staggered conformation than in what's called an eclipse conformation because there's less repulsion uh, in, this, in this manner where the, where the atoms are farther apart from each other. The way we represent that is by looking at the picture like this. Now when we add in the methyl group, that obviously adds in a little more extremism to this. Okay? And if we had a bunch of methyl groups or if we had something large like a phenyl group, a benzene ring, that would add even more to it. And so what we can do is we can look at this and say, okay, as this rotates, what problems are going to arise? Well, here, when this methyl group starts to get close to a hydrogen, there could be a significant amount of repulsion. So that's going to make it more difficult for this to rotate. And that's going to be something that's going to show up in an infrared spectra. So then we're going to see in an infrared spectra that there's a shift where a larger amount of energy is required to get this rotation of the bond. Whereas if I just had ethane, and I get rid of propane, change this around, now when that bond rotates, I can go from an eclipse to staggered a little bit easier because there's less steric hindrance, there's less repulsion, so it's a little bit easier for this to wiggle and waggle, so it takes a lower energy infrared light to get to do so. I guess I should be saying microwave. But. All right, so, so what I want to do is I want to make it really clear what these pictures are, and here's how I want to do it. I want to build a molecule and then go ahead and draw what the Newman prediction is. Okay, so we're going to go back to propane for a second here. And I'm going to do this. Okay, So in this, here's what I have. I have a hydrogen going up, one going to the left, one going to the right. The second carbon also has a hydrogen going to the left, also going to the right, and it has a methyl group going straight up. So this is currently in an eclipsed pattern. So we're going to draw this. We're going to do this in black down here. So we're going to put our carbon in the center, and then our second carbon behind it. Okay, so our carbon in the center has a hydrogen going straight up. That would be this one here. It has one coming down over here. That's this one here. And one more over here. That's this one here. The second carbon also has a hydrogen. That's this one right here. Also has a hydrogen over here. That's this one right here. And then it has a methyl group coming out the top. And that methyl group is this right here. Okay. 
And then we can expand this, of course. If you get into higher level organic chemistry, you're going to draw these for uh, a cyclic cyclohexane. And in that, you're going to have two of these that you can look at simultaneously for the two edges of the, of the hexagon shape. Okay. So what this is trying to do is this is trying to simplify down this complicated picture into something that we can draw and then we can analyze a little bit. For example, if I had given you one that's not drawn up there, but one that looked like this. If we had had a methyl group, let's say we were looking at butane. Okay, well butane's going to have two carbons in the center, and then it's going to have two, two carbons on the end. So if I want to look at butane, I could draw this here. And here I have a, a staggered conformation for butane where I've got a methyl group and a methyl group as far apart from each other as possible. Um, and so if I, were to, if I were to change this, what I would do is I would just simply take this and put another methyl group here as far away from this as possible. But when I rotate that and the methyl group comes up, that's me rotating this up to here. And then there's that repulsion between them, which is going to influence how it rotates and its stability.